So let's take a look at the following example in which we're going to determine the reaction mechanism of the addition of our bromine, diatomic bromine, in the presence of ethanol into our 1,3-butadiene. And we know that the following four products are formed in different concentrations. So our goal is to determine the mechanism by which these products are actually formed. So let's begin with our 1,3-butadiene molecule. So we have our two double bonds and we also have our diatomic bromine molecule. So in the first step, we basically have one, our, one of our pi bonds basically attacks one of these bromines. So because we have symmetry, it doesn't matter which one of these pi bonds we use. So let's use this pi bond here. So this pi bond grabs this bromine displacing this lone pair of electrons onto the second bromine and we form a resonance stabilized structure. So as long as the bromine goes on the first carbon, we form a resonance stabilized structure. And that's exactly why the bromine will not go on this carbon because that will not form a resonance stabilized intermediate molecule. So let's draw our intermediate and this is of course resonance stabilized. So this bromine goes right here we have a double bond here and we have a positive charge on this carbon. So we have an empty 2p orbital. Now basically this is resonance stabilized so this pi bond goes onto here bonding with our 2p orbital. So we have a pi bond here, our bromine is here and now this develops a partial or actually a full positive charge. So this is our resonance stabilized structure. So now inside our solution we basically have the second bromide molecule floating around and this has of course a negative charge because it has one extra electron so let's give it a negative charge. And not only do we have this molecule in our solution, we also have our ethanol. So let's draw our ethanol. So this is our ethanol molecule. So now the question is, will this react with our positive charges or will this attack our positive charges? So let's begin by developing the reaction mechanism for this let's call this product one and this let's call this product two. So let's go over here and let's label this as the second step that forms our product number one. So basically this bromide molecule, so let's label it here, this bromide molecule basically uses one of its lone pair of electrons and attacks this open position on the 2p orbital of this carbon bonding forming the following molecule. So we have our lone pair of electrons attacking this and at the end we form the following molecule. We have the pi bond here, one of our Br and the second Br here. So this is product one. Now what about product two? Well, product two is formed in a similar way that is this bromide still reacts with this intermediate carbocation, but it doesn't react with this positive charge, but rather it reacts with this one. So lone pair of electrons attacks this carbon instead of this one, forming the following molecule. So that is the reaction mechanism for our product number two. So we have a pi bond here, our Br here, and our Br here. Now, let's label this one as three, and let's label this one as product four. And let's go over here. So we have our product three. 
So basically, one of these electrons on our oxygen now can either attack this or this. Since we're forming product number three, we know it must attack this one. So we basically form this attacks this. So we have here we go, here we have our Br, we have our oxygen, and then we have our two. Now this one, by the way, still has an H. So that means this oxygen will have a positive charge. So let's give it a positive charge. And so we see that there is a final step, a deprotonation step that must actually take place. So basically one of our bases found inside our solution, for example, uh, a bromide molecule takes away this H, removing the H and leaving our lone pair of electrons on the oxygen. So now after our molecule is deprotonated by a base, we basically form the following final product that we were looking for. So this is our oxygen. This oxygen has our lone pair of electrons and this is our CH2 and CH3. And finally, let's write our mechanism for the production or the formation of product four. So this is almost the same as here, except in this case, the lone pair of electrons attacks this open P, open 2P orbital, this positive, instead of this one. So basically we have the same exact step or a very similar step except our double bond is now here, our Br is still here, and our uh, ethanol is found here. So we have the oxygen, we have our H, and we have our uh, CH2 and CH3. Now, this is once again with a positive charge. So the last step is to deprotonate our H. And the way we're going to do it is by using a base that is found in our mixture. So either this can deprotonate it or this can deprotonate it. And we form our product number four that looks something like this. So this is product four, this is product three, product two, and product one. Now notice we can actually formulate a second type of mechanism because our Br2, the diatomic bromine, can basically create a bromonium intermediate, intermediate in which we have our cyclic three-membered group. So either that mechanism works or this mechanism works as well in which we have the resonance-stabilized intermediate.